Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. There are a lot of different opinions on hydrogen out there, like BMW that think it's the next big thing, while Volkswagen say it's not, just look at the science, but we do need hydrogen, but as a chemical, and so far that is actually a part of the problem, not the solution. The way we use it today is even more polluting than using fossil fuel. And as Volkswagen says, just look at the science, because when we look at the science, there are a whole bunch of problems with hydrogen when we look into it as a fuel that most people are not even aware of. And Fully Charged has just made two very good interviews with Professor David Sebon that has been studying hydrogen and Paul Martin, a chemical engineer, and they have really given some great insights into the world of hydrogen, what we need it for and what we really should not use it for. I will leave a link to both interviews down below, but if you don't have a couple of hours to watch those interviews, I will try to put all the science into this video to give you the truth about hydrogen and what the oil industry don't want you to know. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So the thing is, we do need hydrogen as a chemical to make ammonia for fertilizer and in the metal industry to make metal, but that is using the chemical aspect of hydrogen, not as a fuel. But pretty much all of the hydrogen today is made by fossil fuel. So the hydrogen we do need is not part of the solution, but actually a part of the problem. We need to make that hydrogen into green hydrogen for it to work towards the zero emission future and not against it. Because hydrogen is not just hydrogen. There are different colors of hydrogen and that is very important to understand. Gray hydrogen is made from fossil fuel, which is 99% of all hydrogen today. Then there are blue hydrogen, that is pretty much just gray hydrogen, but with CO2 capture and storage. And then there is green hydrogen, that is made from only renewables, and really the only hydrogen we want, because that is the only one that is truly green. We will dive a little bit more into this in a minute, but as I mentioned, we do need hydrogen to make steel and fertilizer. Today we make about 120 million tons of hydrogen every single year, but more than 99% of that is grey hydrogen, so made from fossil fuel, with no carbon capture. Paul Martin, a chemical engineer with 30 years of experience and creator of Spitfire Research, is saying that we probably need 90 million tons of these 120 tons in the future. You know, for fertilizer and making iron and other stuff we use hydrogen for as a chemical. So we need to make these 90 million tons of hydrogen into green hydrogen. That will take about 4,500 terawatt hours of energy to do that. So how much is that you ask? Well, that is twice as much renewable as solar and wind combined made in all of 2019. So quite a bit. Just to make the 90 million tons of hydrogen green instead of grey, to make the hydrogen actually good for the environment and not bad for the environment, like the 120 million tons of grey hydrogen that is made today. And we do need this hydrogen as a chemical and not as a fuel. So let's start with solving that problem, converting the hydrogen we do actually need into green hydrogen, because that is going to be a big task all on its own. So why not use hydrogen as a fuel as well? Because it's very inefficient. It is not an energy source. It is an energy storage system. But 
a bad one. Let me try to show you why hydrogen is so bad as a fuel. As we talked about, the green hydrogen is the only hydrogen that we can use, so we need renewable energy to make it. So we have 100% energy created by renewables in terms of electricity. The good stuff, because kilowatts is not just kilowatts. There are two kinds of energy we use. Working energy, like electricity, that is very efficient. And then there is heat energy or chemical energy, like fossil fuel, that is not as efficient. And hydrogen is actually a chemical energy heat energy. And that is why it is also so inefficient. As we take these 100% of good working energy we have just created with renewables and use that electricity to electrolyze water to create hydrogen. But by doing so, we lose about 30% of the energy we have just created. And we have now turned the working energy into heat energy. Then we need to compress it and store it, and we lose even more of the energy doing that. And then we have to turn the heat energy back to electricity, the working energy in the fuel cells, and lose a lot of energy doing that as well, to eventually to turn an electric motor in the hydrogen car. And through all of those steps and processes, we lose about 70 to 80% of the energy we started with. That is how efficient a hydrogen car is. But we still need to pay for the 100% energy we have created to begin with. But we only get about 30% out of the 100% energy. Instead of just taking the 100% electricity we made and put it straight into our cars or in storage batteries and only lose like 10% of the energy. So we pay the same for the 100% but get 90% of the energy out of it. That is why filling up your car with green hydrogen will always be about three times more expensive than filling up with electricity. But even using hydrogen to heat our houses, for example, is also a lose-lose situation. Again, because the heat versus working energy. Because that is also why the heat pumps are so efficient. So even heating houses will be a dumb idea with hydrogen. As a heat pump, like in your Tesla, that is using working energy, electricity, can convert one kilowatt of working energy into 3 kilowatt of heat energy. So with a 100 kilowatt put into your house through an electric heat pump will give you 300 kilowatt of heat heating your home. And that is why a heat pump is so efficient at that. But if you had a hydrogen boiler to make the heat for your house like we have gas boilers today, we are talking about making 100 kilowatt of heat energy into 50 kilowatt of heat. So you would need six times as much energy to heat your house with a hydrogen boiler than with an electric heat pump. Do you really want to pay six times as much to heat up your home? No, I didn't think so. And Professor David Seaborn has actually done the calculation for the UK if they should run the household on hydrogen made from wind turbines and it would practically be impossible. It is really not feasible to have that amount of offshore wind for the UK. So to heat our home is even more inefficient and will never work because no one wants to pay six times more to heat up our home. And it is basically not feasible. So what about the hydrogen car? Why are so many big auto and oil companies pushing so hard for hydrogen then? Well, because 99% of hydrogen you put into your hydrogen car today is grey hydrogen and is made on fossil fuel. But you need twice the amount of fossil fuel to make hydrogen than if you just ran your car on fossil fuel itself. So that is why grey hydrogen is even worse for the environment than diesel. So the fossil fuel industry really wants hydrogen to be a thing because so far it is just another way of using fossil fuel to move our cars. So that is also why you will hear fossil fuel giants talk about hydrogen as it is this magic pill for everything green because it will make them a lot of money until we can make it all green. As we talked about in the beginning, the amount of renewables we need for that will take a long time to build up. So if they can push hydrogen cars out into the streets, they will have a long time to earn some money on selling their fossil fuel without it going directly into the cars. So they hope nobody will 
notice. But what about blue hydrogen? If we can carbon capture it, well, it does theoretically work on a small scale, but it's almost impossible to scale up, as Professor David Seaborn also explained. CO2 capture and storage is too expensive, and one of the reasons it will never work is simply because it's completely unaffordable, and we're not quite sure how to do it on a large scale yet. Either. And another thing that is not very good is that we still have a fugitive methane from the process of making hydrogen with venting, leaking, and burning. And that is really dirty. It is the same for the fossil fuel industry. The fugitive methane from the oil and gas industry has as big a CO2 footprint that is equivalent to the CO2 footprint of all of Europe. Methane is bad. And that is another problem with these blue hydrogen plants they want to build because they might be living up to the CO2 emission standard as of today. But just because of the dirty methane that is used, blue hydrogen plants will not be allowed in maybe just 5 to 10 years, as they are very dirty plants and will not live up to the Paris Agreement's terms in the very near future. And we have to get down to zero emission by 2050. So those blue hydrogen plants that are being built right now will become a big problem in the near future as they have been very expensive to put up but will soon not live up to the CO2 emission standards, something the politicians don't really seem to have understood. So again, everything else but green hydrogen is a lost cause. It will never work. But there is another big problem with hydrogen and that it is very difficult to transport, something many seem to be unaware of. Transporting hydrogen around the world is very, very difficult. It is not really transported around the world as people might think it is. It has been made at the end use and that is how almost all hydrogen is made today. It is made at the fuel station because it is difficult to move around. It is made at the fertilizer plant because we have found out with the decades of experience moving hydrogen is next to impossible. Only 8% of the 120 million tons of hydrogen we make today are transported long distances. So 92% of all the hydrogen is made where we use it. So you don't really transport it as many are talking about. Then we can just transport it around the world as we do today with fossil fuel. No we can't. Just this little example will also show you how ridiculous this is. If you want to carry the same kind of energy in hydrogen as you do in a fuel tanker, one of those 40 ton fuel tankers that comes to the gas station to fill it up, if you want to carry the same amount of energy in hydrogen that you carry in these hydrogen tube trailers at 7 bar, which is very high pressure and frankly speaking madness, but how many tube trailers would you need to get the same amount of energy as from one normal 40 ton diesel tanker. Three, maybe four? No, try 18 tube trailers instead of one diesel tankers. So that would show you how ridiculous the idea of transporting hydrogen is. Instead of one diesel tanker coming to the gas station every day, you need 18 hydrogen tube trailers coming to the station every single day. It makes no sense. They have to make it at sight. But we can just put it through the oil pipelines. No, we can't because hydrogen erodes pipes. You need a very special metal to make pipes for hydrogen. It is very hard to contain and can even leak through metals. It is very leaky gas and even in the best hydrogen cars you still have some leakage of the hydrogen. It is that difficult to transport. So we have to build the whole world pipeline infrastructure one more time with very special materials. We can't use the existing pipeline. So simply put, you don't transport hydrogen. So you really need to make hydrogen on site, but to do that, you need three times as much electricity to electrolyze water to hydrogen than if you just charge your electric car. This is ridiculous. And that also makes the hydrogen fuel station incredibly expensive compared to charging stations, just as we have seen with Shell in the UK. Shell has quietly closed down all its hydrogen filling stations in the UK. Facilities shut down because 
prototype tech had reached its end of life. Shell announced the opening of each of these three hydrogen fueling stations with great fanfare between 2017 and 2019, but it has quietly closed them all down this year because they reached their end of life. Well, that was kind of quick. And each of them have cost at least $2 million to build, according to the Hydrogen Fueling Cell Partnership, and have undoubtedly be operating at a loss in the UK due to the lack of hydrogen-powered vehicles on the country's road. Only two hydrogen-powered car models have been sold in the UK, the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo, resulting in a total sales of 209 and 275 units respectively. Only 11 public hydrogen pump remains open in the UK, compared to more than 57,000 public electric vehicle charging points. And Tesla can make a charging stall for about $43,000, not $2 million. Again, someone has to pay for all of this very expensive equipment. And remember, when we are talking about the EV owner, I personally had put up a charging box at my home that can do 11 kilowatt charging so I can charge overnight, and that did only cost me $800 to put up. And 96% of my charging, as you can see here, is done at my home anyway. You are not going to do that with your hydrogen car. The infrastructure is so much cheaper to put up than the hydrogen infrastructure, just as we see with the hydrogen car. And the kit you need to build a hydrogen car is much more expensive as the kit you need for your electric car. Even Mercedes has seen this after 30 years of investing and developing the hydrogen car, but came to the conclusion it will never work because the technology is too expensive. The car will always be more expensive and the fueling will always be more expensive than an electric vehicle. And that is also what we see today. Hydrogen cars has never really caught on. There are a little over 20,000 hydrogen cars active on the road today in 2022 globally and about 20 million plug-in vehicles. So they are already now been beating 1,000 to 1. At what point will the hydrogen car industry admit, okay, BEV has won the race? Like, when did Betamax admit that they have lost to the VHS tape? And when did Sony admit that the Minidisc has lost to the MP3 player? The Minidisc was a great alternative to CDs, but it lost to the MP3 player. Like the hydrogen car running on green hydrogen could be a great alternative to ICE cars, but they have already lost to the BEV. Today, they are already a thousand to one, and it will be worse next year. But they have already lost. They just don't want to admit it yet. And a good example of just how expensive hydrogen cars still is, is probably Geely's Xilan SL3 that they sell as a BEV for about $26,000 in China. But they also make it as a hydrogen version that cost $105,000. And on top of that, they have to pay three times more on the fuel. And there are only 26 hydrogen stations in all of China where you can fill up your hydrogen car. And according to the latest data on Statista, China has a total of 1.15 million public EV chargers. Of China's total figures, 677,000 chargers are slow chargers, like the ones at home or at hotels and so on, while 470,000 chargers are fast chargers. So 470,000 chargers against 26. So this is not even a thousand to one. This is an 18,000 to one. And most people that have a house will just charge 95% of the time at home while they sleep anyway. Who will ever buy that hydrogen car in China, the world's biggest car market? I think no one. It makes no sense. You have to be financially insane to pick the hydrogen car over the EV. That is why the hydrogen cars are going nowhere. They have gone nowhere in 30 years and is still going nowhere. Last year, in 2021, the global sales, and I repeat, global sales, was less than 16 thousand units from all OEMs making hydrogen cars globally. This is a joke. 
That is what Tesla make of EVs in four days. Over the last seven years globally, all hydrogen cars that have ever been made and sold are over 42,000 units. That is what Tesla by themselves have delivered in 11 days here in 2022. So the hydrogen car and the infrastructure is moving so slow that it will just not happen. Just on this fact alone, the shift to 100% BEV will happen way before hydrogen gets any meaningful traction. Because nobody wants to buy these cars. It is not that the car doesn't work, because they do, but they are just too expensive. As Mercedes has also concluded after 30 years of development of the hydrogen car. And Volkswagen has also done the research on this, and they have made their own little chart and showing just how inefficient the hydrogen fuel is is. So the only advantage it really have is that it can be refilled fast, but that will also very soon be irrelevant. Firstly, it does take about four and a half minutes to fill up the Toyota Mirai from 5% to 100%. And because you can't fill it up at home, you do need to fill it up all the way where I don't usually fill up my car all the way if I'm just on my way home from my near family that live like a hundred kilometers away. So I only need to spend five minutes on charging and then I can go home and then I charge at home instead. And normally I don't spend any time filling up as I just charge overnight. So in our daily routine, we don't even spend the five minutes on charging at all. But with the hydrogen, you do need to go to the hydrogen station and spend those five minutes. And in my case, with the driving we do, I will need to do that two times a week. So spend 10 minutes filling up the hydrogen car. And of course, the time it takes to get off route and back on route. But this would add up to more than 10 hours a year that I save on having an EV instead of a hydrogen or even a nice car. But anyway, all of this is getting irrelevant very fast. As the Chinese GAC Ion Electric Car has shown, it can charge with 480 kilowatts and their car can charge from 0 to 80 in just 8 minutes or 30 to 80, which would be a much more normal scenario on a road trip in just five minutes. So from 30 to 80% in just five minutes, that's as fast as it will take up to fill a hydrogen car from five to 100%. The only advantage the hydrogen car has, that is, it can fill up in five minutes, will soon be something you can do with your EV as well. It compares very favorably to ICE cars. But what about the truck? Well, the cost of the energy and the inefficiency does not change just because the vehicles becomes bigger. And again, the trucks that we do have are not really that efficient. Toyota has partnered with Kinilworth to develop a fuel cell electric freight truck, but that is only capable of 300 miles of range compared to Tesla's 500 miles of range on their fully electric truck. And the truck would be much more expensive to buy and the fuel again, three times more expensive as well. Which company is willing to do that? when they don't have to. I think, again, no one. Or they will simply not be competitive compared to others that buy the battery electric truck. So no, hydrogen will not even work for the big rigs because the amount of energy that is needed is just massive and the cost will be just as huge. Cost will kill this hydrogen truck all on its own. And Professor David Seaborn has been out there in the field in the UK testing all of this and trying to find out if the electric truck actually could do the job and the answer was yes. And Tesla is about to prove that as well with their semi truck now. And even Scania, one of the world's biggest truck manufacturer, has also been working with both technologies, but they also came to the same conclusion Pure electric trucks are the way to go. And we already have electric trucks and buses on the road today from BYD, Volvo, Scania and Tesla from the 1st of December. And the truck will be able to charge while it on and offload the truck. Huge benefit for the electric truck. And Tesla has even showed they can make it even better than the diesel truck. It can charge the battery up faster than the mandatory brake the truck drivers have to take. In the UK, for example, the truck driver has to stop every four and a half hours of driving for a 45 minute break. So the Tesla semi truck would be able to 
drive those four and a half hours and will be able to charge up again in those 45 minutes. So here the truck driver would not even wait for the truck. He would plug it in and go take his break. So this would actually be even more convenient than the diesel truck that can take 15 to 20 minutes to fill up that big tank. And as Elon has just said at the earnings call, you don't need hydrogen for heavy duty trucks. The Tesla Semi is proof of that and the Tesla Semi will have a 500 mile range fully loaded. And like 80 or 90% of the trucks in the world are never fully loaded, so they can go even longer. And they will start the first deliveries in December. And it is not even with the 4680 cell, so it will, later this decade, become even better. So no, hydrogen will not be better for the trucks either. Even Toyota admits electric cars are better as their engineer for the Mirai says Elon Musk is right. It's better to charge the electric car directly by plugging it in, said Tanaka. But hydrogen has a place as a viable alternative to gasoline, he said. Well, like the disc man, it, it was a good alternative to the CD, but the MP3 player just outbeat it as we have seen the EV. But it's nice to see that even Toyota knows it's better to charge the electric car directly. But what about the big ships and planes? Well, because we are nowhere near having a lot of green hydrogen available, I think solid state batteries will come in the next decade and revolutionize the planes and ship industry. We have just seen NASA showing off their new solid state batteries that can hold twice the amount of energy as today's lithium ion batteries and weigh about 40% less and use no cobalt, no nickel, or lithium. So I personally think the solid state battery will evolve to take over in the large transportation sector than green hydrogen. Hydrogen is still the most inefficient way of doing this. And since it has such a long way to go, I think it will be overtaken by the solid state battery in the 2030s. We still need hydrogen, just to be clear, as a chemical. So that should be our priority number one when it comes to hydrogen, to make that hydrogen green. And we still have a long way to go to just do that. Electricity is not perfect, but we don't need a perfect solution. We need a good and fast solution to make it possible for us to fight the climate crisis and not have toxic gases being put out in our cities. And hydrogen is neither good nor fast as a fuel. Hydrogen has already lost as a fuel. The only question is just when will the hydrogen car industry admit it? Mercedes has already done so. Volkswagen, Ford, GM and most other OEMs have already said they will be all BEVs. But the Japanese automakers have invested a lot and have a large population on a very small land, which also makes renewables harder for them. So they are not willing to admit defeat just yet. And neither is a BMW. As their CEO Sipsa just said, after the electric vehicle, which has been going on for about 10 years and is scaling up rapidly, the next trend will be hydrogen. When it's more scalable, hydrogen will be the hippest thing to drive. Sorry, Sepsa, but I don't see green hydrogen even becoming more scalable. And the electric car is not just a trend that will pass. Like the trend of saying hippest thing <laughs> has passed many decades ago. But we will see how long they will keep on fighting for the worst battery in the world. Hydrogen. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>